this year, Netflix released the trailer for Anne with a Knee, the latest adaptation of the classic Anne of Green Gables book by Lucy Maud Montgomery. I was immediately drawn in by its arresting beauty and intrigued by the darker interpretation it promised, having known of the books and enjoyed the animated series when I was a kid. That's enough of that. I would just like to take this opportunity to apologize to my parents. My girlfriend and I just finished watching the show, and we both really enjoyed it. But despite the fact that the show has generally high ratings from critics and audience alike, there were quite a few negative reviews from longtime fans, the majority of which had the same general thesis of, I don't like it because it's dark, and that's not how it was in the books or miniseries, and oh my stars, everyone is so mean. An article from The New Yorker even likened the way Anne backhands Gilbert to the casual violence of a mob enforcer. <laughs> okay, sure. Funnily enough, that was actually one of the things that I loved the most in the trailer, but I digress. Is that an apt assessment? Is Anne too edgy? I don't think so. Now, I am not a fan of excessively dark shows in general. There are exceptions to every rule, but most of the time I find that mediocre white dudes just employ grimdark to label their work as serious and important in favor of doing, you know, any kind of actual work. And I don't really find it all that compelling. Usually, the most common reasons given for Anne with an E being too dark are as follows. Anne has flashbacks to traumatizing events. Hardly anyone likes her at first. Looks like the Cuthberts have picked up a stray. The violence displayed by the characters, and other things that were not in the book. The most controversial of which being when Anne unwittingly describes to her classmates overhearing sexual intercourse, and possibly rape, when she was serving her previous family. I could honestly make a whole separate video about that episode. Feminism. What an incredible word. You didn't do Adam Lee any favors bringing that trollop. What's interesting about these complaints is that most of the time, these are things lifted from the books. They're just more pronounced in the show. I literally read one article that complained about how the books didn't focus on real life troubles like foreclosure. And that's just really funny because genuine spoiler alert, in the book, Matthew dies of a heart attack from the stress of that exact scenario. Often, what seemed to make certain fans angry about the show's darkness is that Moira Wally Beckett, who wrote this screenplay and also some of the most critically acclaimed episodes of Breaking Bad, took things from the book that were originally played off as comedic or harmless and looked at them through the eyes of a modern adult. But that kind of makes sense. After all, the key to a good adaptation is finding just the right amount of fidelity to the source material, relatability to your contemporary audience. Next you'll be telling me you all burnt your corsets and danced naked at Town Hall. We ran out of time. While also doing something new. In my opinion, Wally Beckett does that, just in a different way than Kevin Sullivan did when he did the 1985 miniseries. Because, you know, TV audiences have changed in the last 30 years. There are two really great examples of this lighthearted turned troubling phenomenon. The first being Anne's imaginary mirror friend Katie, who is literally just Anne's reflection. Because that is how tremendously alone and lonely this child is. Someone please protect this child! The second is the relationship between Anne's school teacher Mr. Phillips, who I might add is a total jerk, and the younger female student Prissy. And yeah, this kind of relationship was more acceptable at the time it was written in. But amazingly enough, doesn't make it any less creepy, especially considering how much Philip seems to delight in humiliating children. So yes, the show is dark, in content as well as in the aesthetic, but so are the books. And the show does a fantastic job of balancing the cloudy and disturbing with the joyful and bright. I think people are confusing darkness for the sake of being dark with just not romanticizing the past. Period pieces with white people are notorious for ignoring unpalatable parts of history in favor of gorgeous dresses and charming social conventions. We like to think of modern society as rife with evil, crime, and terrible people. This is actually not really true. Relatively speaking, we're living in a time that's less dangerous than 50 years ago. We only feel that the world is worse because we're so constantly inundated with images and information about the horrible stuff that does go on that it biases our perception. This is known as Mean World Syndrome. My point being that our period shows are influenced by how we feel about the uncertainty of our lives in the present. And usually, they reflect an idealized, safer version of the past for us to find comfort in. The 1985 miniseries is actually a really great example of this. It was certainly never meant to be very historically accurate. 
It's a bright, cheery, sanitized look at Anne's adventures, and it also places more of a focus on the romantic relationship between Anne and Gilbert than the books do, which fits rather well with the 1985 period movie landscape. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different interpretation. Compare that with Wally Beckett's goals. She wanted to give this young girl the same kind of dramatic treatment and clout that we give grumpy white men on television, because that fits with our TV landscape today. This is also one of the reasons she went to such great lengths to make the show look as historically realistic as possible, from the clothing they wore to the crops they would have grown. We like depth, which Anne definitely has, but so does her setting. Remember earlier how I said that most of the heavier scenes come from the books? Well, most of them are also directly tied to when the story is set. Anne being beaten and treated like crap because she's an orphan? That's because of how society viewed orphans as disposable sinners in that time period. Diana having to run for Anne's help in the middle of the night because her sister has croup? It's only life-threatening and terrifying because they don't have modern medicine. Or, like, ambulances. Guy tries to abduct her at the train station and when he's unsuccessful moves on to two small boys? Well, this one is a bit different. It's certainly more chilling given that we like to think that people were nicer in the past. But no, we had creeps lurking in train stations back then too. The point is that Anne's life isn't portrayed to be simple and carefree because she lives in a time before the internet or smartphones. Anne deals with tons of problems and dangers because she lives in the past. The wonderful heartfelt moments in the show come from the relationships between characters as well as their environment, not because of a pastoral existence. I know it's hard to see a story that you love interpreted in a way that's different than your own or in a way that you feel is wrong. And I especially understand how frustrating that can be in this day and age of lazy, gritty reboots. But personally, I don't think Anne with me qualifies. There are absolutely some upsetting moments, complete with dark lighting and color grading, but they're outnumbered by neutral or genuinely sweet scenes with warm lighting and exciting colors. The aesthetic of the series reflects Anne's temperament and journey because she is the heroine and as she becomes more settled in her life at Green Gables, the tone becomes more stable. The tension is never done to revel in violence. There is always some purpose behind it, whether it's to show the reasons that Anne has to use her imagination to survive, or to remind us that the past isn't the idyllic paradise we give it credit for. There's not really any point in remaking something if you don't do anything new and compelling with it. And something that makes Anne with an E new and compelling is that it's made for older audiences without relying on cheap or gross tactics to make the story more adult, like some shows do. Anne of Green Gables is a story that for many was experienced in childhood, and now you get to see the same story with the eyes and experience of an adult. Montgomery knew how society treated orphans and disobedient children, and it is there in her books. She also probably knew that adults would recognize that commentary. And I think that's the series that Wally Beckett made. And don't forget, adaptations remind us of whatever they're based on. This series brings Montgomery's work to new readers, and even Sullivan's show to new viewers. And to an extent, if it's done that, I think that no matter how much of a purist you are, or how much you detest a new adaptation, it's done something right. Thank you guys for watching! Ah. Wow, this was a different kind of video. I've been wanting to do a video essay for a while, and this was really fun to write. I hope you'll give it a like if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you thought in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to The Princess and the Scrivener for more videos on Disney, intersectional feminism, pop culture critiques, and more. The Princess will see you next week. Couldn't they have gotten a child who can sing? <laughs>